Eleven, the new idol. We are halfway into the first part of the book, and we already have a good sense of the environment it takes place in. The environment is biblical. Zarathustra is a prophet type who wanders the hills and mountains surrounding the city of Pait Kao, speaks an archaic tongue, and gives speeches to those who dare follow him. The city itself feels like an old city, and there's no mention of any modern technology. And yet, his speeches pertain to the time the book was written, in the mid-1880s. Nietzsche evidently felt that the modern world needs a prophet like the prophets of old, someone who will come and chastise it for its deprivation, prophesize doom in case it doesn't change its ways, and offer a path to salvation. And so we get this unique combination of old and new. Yes, Pied Cow feels more like an ancient Greek polis than a modern city, but its population is an allegory to modern society, and serves to highlight its ills. In The New Idol, Zarathustra talks about one of the most defining entities of the modern age, namely, the modern state. Somewhere there are still peoples and herds, but not with us, my brethren. Here there are states. The opening makes a sharp distinction between a people and a state. According to Zarathustra, in modern Europe there are no longer peoples, in the sense of nations. The nations have been supplanted by states. A state? What is that? Well, open now your ears unto me, for now will I say unto you my word concerning the death of peoples. A state is called the coldest of all cold monsters. Coldly lieth it also, and this lie creepeth from its mouth. I, the state, am the people. It is a lie. Creators were they who created peoples, and hung a faith and a love over them. Thus they served life. Destroyers are they who lay snares for many, and call it the state. They hang a sword and a hundred cravings over them. The state pretends to be the representative of the nation, but Zarathustra pours hellfire on this pretension. Nations, he says, coalesced around the vision made by one creator, who gave them shared values. Members of a nation had the same faith and the same love, and felt affinity to each other. This goes back to what he said about individuals, that they should have one virtue and cultivate it, instead of trying to develop many virtues. It goes for groups as well. A nation is a group of people that has one shared identity, and thus it can thrive. But the state is a mechanism that does not have an identity, and tries to serve hundreds of different cravings. The people who created the state are not creators but destroyers. They draw people in with promises of fulfilling all these cravings, but this does not make them thrive. And the state hangs a sword over their head, a threat of using its power against them, because that's the only way to keep these different people together. This mixture of people with different values, this spite cow of a society that lives under one flag, is what the modern world calls a nation. But Zarathustra calls it a lie. Where there is still a people, there the state is not understood, but hated as the evil eye, and as sin against laws and customs. This sign I give unto you, every people speaketh its language of good and evil. This its neighbor understandeth not, its language hath it devised for itself in laws and customs. Every nation is unique. It draws its values, laws and customs from its unique nature and they are what is most suitable for it. But the state is something else, which is why true nations despise it. But the state lieth in all languages of good and evil, and whatever it saith it lieth, and whatever it hath it hath stolen. False is everything in it, with stolen teeth it biteth the biting one, false are even its bowels. Confusion of language of good and evil, this sign I give unto you as the sign of the state. Verily, the will to death indicateth this sign. Verily, it beckoneth unto the preachers of death. The state, on the other hand, does not draw its values from the unique nature of its people, because there is no such nature. It just steals values from others and imposes them on its members. As a result, their life lacks form and direction, 
and they cannot thrive. This situation draws in the preachers of death, which we described in an earlier discourse, those who preach that earthly life is meaningless, and you should turn your back on it. Many too many are born, for the superfluous ones was the state devised. See just how it enticeth them to it, the many too many how it swalloweth and cheweth and re-cheweth them. The modern state is dedicated mainly to the well-being of its citizens. It ensures that they have a secure and long life. But, says Arthusa, the result is that too many people are born in it, people who cannot find their place. They all become cogs in the great machine called the state. On earth there is nothing greater than I. It is I who am the regulating finger of God. Thus roareth the monster, and not only the long-eared and short-sighted fall upon their knees. Ah, even in your ears, ye great souls, it whispereth its gloomy lies. Ah, it findeth out the rich hearts which willingly lavish themselves. Yea, it findeth you out too, ye conquerors of the old god. Weary ye became of the conflict, and now your weariness serveth the new idol. Alas, the modern people don't realize what they have lost with the loss of nations. They have fallen under the spell of the modern state, and worship it as a new idol. Even those who fought against theocratic rule, because they valued their individual thought, have fallen for this Moloch. They believe it is the alternative to the god that they killed. But in that... They give up on their individual thoughts. Heroes and honourable ones, it would fain set up around it the new idol. Gladly it basketh in the sunshine of good consciences, the cold monster. Everything will it give you, if ye worship it, the new idol. Thus it purchaseth the lustre of your virtue and the glance of your proud eyes. It seeketh to allure by means of you the many too many. Yea, a hellish artifice hath here been devised, a death horse jingling with the trappings of divine honours. Yea, a dying for many hath here been devised, which glorifieth itself as life, verily a hearty service unto all preachers of death. The state, I call it, where all are poison drinkers, the good and the bad, the state where all lose themselves, the good and the bad, the state where the slow suicide of all is called life. So Arthusa now begins to describe how this new idol wins the faith of the multitudes. The modern state promises you a good life on earth if you become part of it. And it delivers, too, if you look at the material side. But your spiritual side decays and it opens you to receive the poison of the preachers of death. Just see these superfluous ones. They steal the works of the inventors and the treasures of the wise. Culture they call their theft, and everything becometh sickness and trouble unto them. Just see these superfluous ones. Sick are they always. They vomit their bile and call it a newspaper. They devour one another, and cannot even digest themselves. Just see these superfluous ones. Wealth they acquire and become poorer thereby. Power they seek for, and above all, the lever of power. Much money, these impotent ones. The culture of the modern state is just stolen from authentic cultures. Modern journalism is just bile vomited on paper by those who have no other pleasure in life than to smear others. And capitalism created a class of people who think that being rich is what will buy them happiness, but they don't realize that their spirit is impoverished thereby. See them clamber, these nimble apes. They clamber over one another and thus scuffle into the mud and the abyss. Towards the throne they all strive. It is their madness, as if happiness sat on the throne. Oft times sitteth filth on the throne, and oft times also the throne on filth. Madmen they all seem to me, and clambering apes, and too eager. Badly smelleth their idol to me, the cold monster. Badly they all smell to me, these idolaters. Finally, 
The last characteristic of the state that he attacks is that since it does not provide a shared vocation to its members, they all just fight one another. And what do they fight for? Being the leaders of the state, a goal which actually has no value. My brethren, will ye suffocate in the fumes of their maws and appetites? Better break the windows and jump into the open air. Do go out of the way of the bad odor, withdraw from the idolatry of the superfluous. Do go out of the way of the bad odor, withdraw from the steam of these human sacrifices. There is only one solution, says Zarathustra, and that is to escape the state and find a place where it does not exist, a place where you can form a nation. Open still remaineth the earth for great souls. Empty are still many sights for lone ones and twain ones, around which floateth the odor of tranquil seas. Open still remaineth a free life for great souls. Verily, he who possesseth little is so much the less possessed. Blessed be moderate poverty. Outside of the modern state, he says, you can still live and thrive. Of course, things have changed since the time these words were written. The modern state is now everywhere, and all pervasive. It has overtaken almost every corner of earth, and it is involved in almost everything we do. The solutions Arthusta offers no longer feels viable. There, where the state ceaseth, there only commenceth the man who is not superfluous. There commenceth the song of the necessary ones, the single and irreplaceable melody. There, where the state ceaseth, pray, look thither, my brethren, do ye not see it, the rainbow and the bridges of the superman? Thus spake Zarathustra. Individualism and greatness are possible only where the modern state does not exist, says Zarathustra. What should we, 21st century readers, make of this? Are we doomed to mediocrity and herd mentality? Well, only if we take him in the literal sense. If we understand it in a figurative sense, it is possible to leave the modern state in spirit, while living in the state. Since Nietzsche never advocated that anyone leave Europe, he probably meant it more in that sense. If we free our mind of the idolatry of the state, we can get to a state of mind where, according to Zarathustra, we can still dream of that place over the rainbow.